All right, what's going on guys? Dan Watson. We're gonna take a look at Luminar Neo today. Let me just make sure I'm screen recording. You know, one of the things I love about this MacBook Pro is I can probably record this entire video with screen recording on and you will never hear the fan on it because it is so silent. But uh, check this out too. I couldn't show this off before, but this phone, if you saw me shooting with a BMW M series car on my Instagram, this is why. This is a BMW M series branded new phone by IQ and it is absolutely stunning. It is just an absolutely beautiful phone. Has some really cool camera features. So yeah, definitely going to be looking at that. I'm almost done editing the video and is really awesome. Also, I just found out today that the company Skylum is actually based in Ukraine and the team that works on Luminar Neo is also based in Ukraine, many of them inside the capital. So I just wanted to give you that information out there because they're going through a whole lot right now and anything that we can do to support them is going to be awesome. But they have put out some really cool features in the software and I really wanna take a look at it because there is a lot going on in this new version of Luminar Neo. So let's check out this image I've already done some edits on and this was actually shot on the Mavic 3 and I'll kind of break down some of what Luminar is doing here. So we have all of these essentials. So we have this crop on the top and then we have these essential tools right here. The develop module is really where all of your power lies, especially if you're shooting raw, this is going to be it right here. Exposures, highlights, whites, curves, um, your temperatures, tints, everything like that. Sharpening, noise reduction, optics, you can do distortion, everything like that. Then you have this like accent tool, this AI enhance, which does some shadow and highlight modification, but it does it with keeping your highlights and you're basically your white and your black points in check, which is really awesome. I'll show you this a lot. Erase, structure, detail, everything like that, denoising, all of that is built into this. So basically all of the tools that you would need to edit your photo are built in here. Plus we have a ton of different more creative modes. So you can do sky replacements, relighting and AI, add atmospheric haze, sun rays, uh, change the look, mood toning, all of that kind of stuff to your image. And then we have this portrait breakdown area right here, which allows you to do ton of portrait correction, really easy, like single clicks type stuff. Now let's jump into this edit because one of the things that's new here is basically every time you make a change to a module, it makes it its own layer and then gives you access to that particular layer and what you did inside this edit. So let's go down to like the first thing that I did. That would be this develop module. Let's look at the before and you can see that the edit that came out of the Mavic 3, it still has distortion on it. It doesn't look good at all. It's basically just a raw file out of the camera. So I added some basic corrections. I increased the shadows on it a little bit to get, get it looking like a normal photo. And then I fixed the optical uh, properties on it to get rid of all that distortion. So didn't take very long and I was able to do that. Then I jumped into this AI enhance tool right here, which just added a little bit to those shadow areas and also some enhancement to the sky. And this is where I did a lot of tuning right there. So now I jumped into the develop module and did quite a bit. So actually a lot of this is actually in the curves. I did some modifications to the curves on some of this, added some exposure, contrast, uh, changed a little bit with the color situation going on here actually a little too much. So then I jumped into the develop module again, but this one is mass just for the sky. So you can see I just modified it here and we can actually take a look at the mask itself right in here, show mask. And yeah, you can see that I just painted in this area right in here to give it a little bit more power to that sky. And then I fine tuned those colors again. And this is actually just for the sky as well. And what I was seeing is a lot of blues on this left side. So basically I just dialed some of those out using HSL, uh, mostly into my saturation levels, took out some of the blues of that area right there. And that helped quite a bit. So that is like how an actual edit works in Luminar Neo. Now let's go in and actually edit a few photos ourselves. Let's start things off with a portrait because there are a ton of different tools for portrait photographers in here that are really cool that you can't do in any other software right here. This is actually from a shoot that Manny Ortiz and I did with the Nikon Z9 and Canon R3. This is his wife, Diana, who let us use her as the model for this shoot. And let's jump in and kind of make a couple edits. So I'm gonna increase the exposure just a little bit. I didn't really underexpose too much. I will just add a little bit to that. I'm also gonna bring down the highlights just a tad and add some contrast just basically to to get this raw file looking normal again. And then I do wanna show you this. So jumping into some of the curves, one thing that's really easy to do on this is if I get rid of just a little bit of reds out of the blacks and get rid of a little bit of green 
from those black areas, it kind of gives you a little bit more blue in those darker areas and I really kind of like that. So before and after you can kind of see that getting toned a little bit in that background area. Now I can come in here, actually my temperature, tint, saturation all looks pretty good. What I normally do is I increase the vibrance just a tad and then maybe I'll back off the saturation a tad. And it just helps get those colors pumping without oversaturating the image. Now sharpness and noise reduction, all of that looks good. So no problems right there. So I don't wanna change too much right now with all of the colors, although I do wanna show you this. So jumping into toning, this allows you to kind of map out certain areas so we can change kind of the amount of saturation we add either to the shadows or to the highlights and then pick the color. So if you wanted to add, I don't know, just a little bit of like blues to some of those shadow areas, we can do it right there. Control the saturation of that and then control how much of those shadows that we are affecting, show you before and after, and you can see a lot of that. So really cool stuff you can do on there. And you can also do the same thing to the highlights. Now let's jump into some of these portrait modes. The first new one is portrait bokeh. And this is kind of like what your phone would do by uh, adding some bokeh or masking and then adding some blur to those background areas. However, you can look at this mask and see exactly what it is doing and how it isolated my subject perfectly from the background and then added just a little bit more of that background blur to those areas, which is really cool. But also because it did a mask of her, I can actually change the brightness of my background, bring it down a little bit really easily. I can change the warmth and make it just a little bit cooler if I wanted to. I can change the depth perception from this. So if it wasn't quite getting that depth right, which this is a really hard one because this is a staircase. So the objects nearer to her are going to be less blurred than the objects in the back. And it's looking like it did a really good job at making it more blurry in that background area than it did in that foreground. But you can actually correct a lot of that right in here. And so this is a really cool tool for just adding a lot of different things to those photos and giving you so much control over particular areas of your image. So now let's jump into some skin retouching. And one thing that's really cool with this is it doesn't change the overall detail of the skin. It works really well at preserving the detail while still smoothing out a lot of the areas, including the shine removal tool. So I'm gonna go ahead and go overboard with a lot of this just so you can see it with uh, YouTube's compression and look at how much detail of the skin it's preserving while still adding a whole lot of softening. And again, I'm going really overkill on this one so you can kind of see it a little bit more but let's before and after this one. And you can see that it really got rid of this highlight right across the bridge of her nose with this shine removal tool. So I can bring that down a little bit to get it kind of a little bit more where I would like it. And then that skin enhancing tool, if I go to 100% just to show you how much it's working, you can see a before and after of that and then see how much softening it's actually adding without taking away the skin detail, which is really, really important for me. So I'm gonna back that off and then we'll come out of here. And then I'll actually go into some of this face tuning area right here. We can add a little bit of light to the face, which is really nice. I would usually have to do this with a mask, but it is doing it automatically for me. So before and after, just a little bit of brightness onto the face. Uh, I wouldn't usually do a lot of stuff with eye enhancing and everything like that, just to show you that it works. We can actually go in here and do some crazy things and enlarge eyes and things like that. The only thing I would normally do is maybe a little bit of eye whitening, uh, eye enhancer, and that's about it. Uh, one thing that's actually really interesting, look at this improve eyebrows, how it just kind of darkens those eyebrow areas. Really cool how this works. Another thing that's really cool is you can go in and just add some saturation to lips, change the redness a little bit. So just like that, in a couple of minutes, we have a really cool before and after, and it made a massive difference. I did this without any painting or masking or anything like that because it did all of that for me. So really, really powerful tool on the portrait editing side. So let's take a look at another image, and this one is actually from that BMW M3 shoot I was telling you about. Really cool image, but it needs some work on this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and pump my exposure just a little bit, not too much, because I don't wanna really affect the entire image all that much, but I'm gonna go ahead and add some contrast in there. 
What I do wanna do is take out some of those highlights, bring that sky back just a bit, and we're gonna add some shadows in as well. So this is taking my image already, and we're getting just a little bit more balance to this image. My white point is actually looking really good. My black point is looking really good as well. Lots of contrast in here. What I will show you again is I can come into this curves, pull out some of the reds from that shadow area, not too much, and pull out some greens from some of that shadow area. And it kind of changes some of that toning to blue. And we'll go ahead and modify this a little bit. I wouldn't normally do this to an image, but you can just see how much toning that is adding to that area. Now, white balance is actually a little bit too low, so we're gonna bring this up a bit. You're seeing some of that blue in that car, and it wasn't blue in that car. I'm also gonna add a little bit of vibrance to the image, uh, not really touch the saturation too much at this point. But yeah, now I'm basically done with a general edit on here and you can see the before and after. So what I do wanna show you though is this structure slider because this is something I use all the time. This adds a little bit more detail to your image, but this one was funny because when I added too much to the image itself, it was just way too much. So I'm gonna add a tiny bit, but this boost slider, what I find is that it adds that contrast and detail to a different area of the image. So I don't know how it's kind of tuning that exactly, but this added it to the road itself, which is really nice. I prefer that. We could go in and kind of fine tune some of these colors, details, noise, all of that is looking pretty good for me. We could add some golden hour to this because it is golden hour. Uh, Dehaze is also a really cool tool for adding a little bit more to it. No foliage, so nothing green to change at all. Now what I do wanna do is go into some of these tools right here. So Relight is a really cool tool because it's basically like adding a gradient to the image. So I'll show you what I'm doing right here. So if I change the brightness, sorry, the near brightness, it is going to change, basically adding a gradient to this bottom part of the image. This is something I would do anyway. I would always do this because I wanna kind of draw attention to the car itself. So I'm gonna darken the area in front of the car always, and then I can change this depth to bring it a bit more to the car. So you can see like a before and after of just what that's doing. This is something that I always do to my images. So yeah, and also I can cool it down in those areas as well, or I can eh, kind of like maybe adding a little bit warmer to reflect some of that extra sunlight that's coming in from there. So, and then you can do the same thing if you want to with the far area, but I won't because that's a sky, so I don't really need to touch that area. Now I do wanna just show you a sky replacement. So this is how easy it is. I can come in here, find a really cool sky. That one looks pretty cool. We'll add that in and that is the image. Now you obviously can come in here and change a lot of the different things. So one of the things that I noticed right away is that my sky is defocused before and it is not now. So I need to defocus this sky. It is really easy to do that. I also need to warm it up a bit and brighten it up a little bit. So these are different things that you can do inside of that. You can change the relighting strength of this on the car itself. I'm actually gonna bring that down a little bit and relight saturation. So how much that sky is affecting the area of the image. But this is basically looking a whole lot better right now. So you can see like a before and after of just what this photo is doing. Another thing that's really cool, you can add in sun rays to your image. So I don't know, the sun was probably coming from right about here in this image. So I can add just a little bit right here. And actually what I like to do is kind of bring that sun radius down a bit, but keep some of those uh, overall, yeah, that's looking really, really nice. Because I kind of like those sun rays. I just don't want this big, bright sun ball in it. So that kind of gives me a really cool function right there. And I'm going to warm that up just a bit to match that background. Again, a little before and after looking cool. And then we can go into kind of some of these, I don't know, some of these other areas and just kind of show you what they do. So you have a mat, you have this mood right here, which actually allows you to just pick a LUT basically and change the amount that that LUT is affecting your image. Now, another thing I found out is really cool is because everything is being done in layers, you can just come in here to this Sunray tool. I've already added a sun technically, but I can just add another one and I will go ahead and put it on the headlight itself. And I wanna change a couple of things about this. So I don't want it to be all that powerful. So I'm gonna bring it down a little bit. 
uh, sun ray length will bring it down a little bit penetration a little bit less and keep that sun radius a little bit more limited i might even cool it down a bit and cool down some of the sun rays and yeah so now i have kind of a before and after of that and I can go add another one. So really quickly like that, I can just add another one to this side. We'll do some of the same thing. We'll add it just a little bit on here, bring it down, bring down the penetration a little bit, bring down that sun radius, boom. And so now you can look at that before and after. And I've added just a little bit of extra glow to those headlights, which is really awesome. If the headlights weren't on, you could basically use this and make the headlights look on. So yeah, some really amazing tools are coming out of Neo. What I love about this software is it's priced really well for what you're getting. You don't have to do a subscription program at all. It is handling raw files extremely well, or you can just really quick go into an image, add a couple of AI stuff, and then call it a day. So really, no matter how you want to edit your images, whether you're an experienced editor or just starting out, this is one of the coolest pieces of software I've ever seen. Appreciate the like, subscribe if you haven't already. Some really cool stuff coming out with things like this, new cameras on the way. So thanks so much for hanging out. Follow me on Instagram if you're not already, at Learning Cameras, and I'll see you soon in a new video.